Jeremy here. Uh, we're in Psalm 2 today. I'm glad you're watching. Uh, let's read through it. Let's pray and then let's talk about it. It says this. It says, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst apart their bonds and cast away the cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrifying them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Lord, we pray that anybody here in this, Lord, would take refuge in you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your psalms. We, we thank you for your decree. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And, and, Lord, we thank you that you are going to show us what you want us to hear from this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, Psalm 2 and Psalm 1 are, are almost kind of considered to be the double doors leading into the book of Psalms. Psalm 1, talking about um, what's your walk like? Are you walking in the counsel of the wicked? Are you standing in the way of a sinner? Are you sitting in the seat of scoffers? Uh, are you like the tree that's planted by water with, with strong roots? Almost like, are you the person that's, that's deeply and strongly planted in the Word of God? Or are you like one that will wither and perish and fade away? And then Psalm 2 talks about those who set themselves against the Lord and against his anointed, meaning Jesus. This is a messianic psalm. This is one of the many, many prophecies of, of, of Jesus coming. Um, it talks about why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain. Atheism is not something that is just connected to America or to uh, our, our generation here today. No, this, is, this has been something from the beginning. I think about atheistic governments that have taken place over the course of our history. I think of what happened during the French Revolution and the, the, how many people got murdered and massacred for believing, for being Christians. I think about Joseph Stalin and how many of his countrymen he murdered for their belief. I think about Pol Pot or Mao or Kim, right? that have killed so many people in the name of atheistic communism. I think, could, could it be that we have thought that this is the way to live because we've been taught this way? Uh, I've heard a horrible st statistic that said that 70% of high school students that go to college lose their faith. 70%. Now what could that be from? A bunch of different things. Uh, could, that's something that pastors need to definitely think about as they're teaching kids. But ultimately, they come to a place where people are telling them untruths, lies. It comes to the fact where, can you critically think about what you believe? Why do you believe what you believe? Can you explain that to somebody? Can you uh, really give an answer for what, why you believe what you believe? At the end of the day, atheism is emptiness. It is going to the grave. It is, it is just dissolving into the dirt. If there's been a, a, a video, there's, it's on YouTube, of Richard Dawkins actually talking to students about that their lives ultimately don't matter. In the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of the universe and, and everything, their lives ultimately don't matter. I've seen so many people, militant atheists, who had set themselves against the Lord. And I've, I'm friends with some. And I pray for them dearly. I, I pray that they would come to know the Lord that I know come to be freed. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. It's almost like generals gathering around a table and in wartime over a map trying to decide what action to take against the opposing army and then setting their army into a line to get ready to attack. 
on the battlefield. This, this atheistic um, religion, because that's what it is. Everybody would say it's a lack of religion, but atheism is actually a religion where you've taken God off of the pedestal he belongs and put yourself there. You're the God of your own world. The unbeliever, they deny the God they know exists. They suppress the knowledge of God and their unrighteousness. And they're at war with God. They're at war with God. They want to burst apart the bonds that God has given them. They want to they cast away the cords. They don't want to be tied down to what God has said and what God has decreed. And there's, there's this guy, H.B. Uh, Charles Jr., that said a pretty awesome quote. He said, is the tree freed when the bulldozer plucks it from the soil? Is the fish ultimately freed when the fisherman's hook catches the lip and yanks it out of the water? Is the train freed as it derails off the tracks that were set before it? No. See, ultimate freedom comes by knowing God. Ultimate freedom comes not only by knowing God, but by following God and His, and His Word. We become freed. We become freed from the prison that is ourselves. We become freed from sin and for, for, from sin's uh, ultimate hold on our lives. We're freed from it. See, sin equals death. Sin equals death. Death. It's, it, it is serious. And, and as, as Christians, just like I talked about last week, we got to hate our sin and turn from our sin and, and run from our sin. Because the unbeliever in this verse, in this, in this chapter, that's denying the God that they know exists and that is, that is wanting to, to go against God, to rebel against God, it says in verse 4 that he who sits in heavens laughs at this. I mean, think about it. The God of all creation, the God of the mountaintops and the ocean bottoms, the God of Jupiter, Mars, and Pluto, the God that right now is holding the Milky Way together, and we are rebelling against that God. H.B. Charles Jr. said a, a quote that he said, Human rebellion is divine comedy. God's laughing about this. It says the Lord holds them in derision, and then he will speak to them in his wrath. And then it goes on and says, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. See, Jesus in Matthew 28, it says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto him. God has given all authority to Jesus. That's why Jesus is King Jesus. This is not Jesus with the white flowing uh, robe and blonde hair, blue eyes with the lamb in his hands. No, this is, this is not that same Jesus. This is Jesus who is King, who is conquering King this is Jesus who is all-powerful, all-knowing. This is Jesus who, is, in John 1, 1, was in the beginning with God and, and was God. This, that's who Jesus is. And it says, I will tell the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As for me, and I will ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. This is talked about again in, in Acts 13, verse 32. It says, that, And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers promised to them like back in Psalm 2 promised to the fathers this has fulfilled to us their children by raising Jesus as also it was written in the second Psalm you are my son today I have begotten you I think of the time in the Bible where Jesus is getting baptized and he comes up out of the water and a voice from heaven says this is my son and who I am well pleased and a dove came down, the Spirit came down just like a dove. It's a picture of the Holy Trinity. God's Son has been given to us as a, as a gift. God, Jesus came down, uh, sacrificed himself for our sins, for our issues, for our problems. He's given his life freely so that we may have life. He has not given his life so that we can be condemned or we can be enslaved or we can be um, uh, chained down. He's given his life for us so that we can have freedom, ultimate freedom. It goes on, it says, You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them into pieces like the potter's vessel. Again, it's not the white-robed, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus with the lamb in his hands that's coming back. It's conquering King Jesus on a horse. It is Jesus that is coming back in wrath and judgment. It goes on and says, Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear 
and rejoice with trembling. This is something that all of our government officials need to hear. You know, we have separation of church and state, which is put into place by us, actually, as Christians. Uh, the government is set in place by God. Like God, that's how God has designed it. And we punish evil and we, we uphold law. And uh, as Christians, we need to be that. We need to be law-abiding citizens. We need to be law-honoring citizens. We need to be Christ to our communities. We need to be a, a, a beacon of light. We need to be that, okay? So we got to be law-abiding. But government officials, the Bible says, be warned, government officials, O rulers of the earth, be careful. Lead your people into truth. We know that our government many times flip-flops around and uh, abortion being legalized and it's it's not okay and it's a straight up sin and it's something that our government officials need to turn from to understand that that Christ he reigns Christ saves and Christ listen please Christ judges ultimately judgment day is coming it goes on it says kiss the son for lest he be angry and you perish in the way for his wrath is quickly kindled. Unbeliever, I pray that you turn from this belief. You turn to the to the God that you know exists. I pray that you come to know him, that you that you really even just look at it critically and really think about it honestly. Look into the, the God of the Bible and really search it, really research it. Take the time. Set aside your presuppositions. Take the time and see who this God is that I'm talking about. With the serpent in the beginning, talking about, did God really say not to eat of the fruit of that tree? Or when Eve said that, we, that God said, we will surely die, he said, no, you, sh you won't surely die. Or when Satan says, uh, you become like God. It's the root of all atheism. Atheism leads to destruction. Turn from it, run from it. Turn to the Christ that you know exists. I hope that's you today. I hope you will hear these words. Turn from your life of sin and trust in Jesus Christ. See you guys next week.